Hello everyone, Dan Bianchi here. It's great to be with you again for the fifth night of our seven Sunday devotions to St. Joseph, meditating on his sorrows and his joys. Specifically this week we'll be thinking about his sorrow at having to flee to Egypt and his joy at constantly being in the presence of Jesus and Mary. And this joy is what helped carry him through that tough time on his way to Egypt and starting over again. So let us together uh, ask St. Joseph and to pray for us and begin our prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, O most watchful guardian of the Son of God, glorious St. Joseph, great was your toil in supporting and waiting upon the Son of God, especially during the flight into Egypt. Yet how you rejoice to have God himself always near you. By this sorrow and this joy, obtain for us the grace that would keep us safe from the devil, especially the help we need to flee from dangerous situations. May we serve Jesus and Mary, and for them alone may we live and happily die. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Joseph and Mary had to flee from their home, their country, their security, to another country with another language and start from scratch. Where is our home going to be now? They must have asked each other. Remember when you were young and you first moved out, you always referred to your parents' place as home. You would say, yeah, I'm going home for the holidays. Then you got married and you moved into a dingy apartment like the one my wife and I did, moved into. But you know, we said to each other, hey, at least this is our home. We didn't care about our surroundings, how poor we were, or how uncertain our future was because we had each other. This was our home. Our mutual love was our home. Now, as we grow in our love for God, we realize that He is our home, our eternal home. This doesn't start in the distant future in heaven, but right now. As the scripture says, what can separate us from the love of God? The more we convince ourselves of the love of God in us, in our hearts, 24-7, we will always have a home wherever we are. So when we think of Joseph's sorrow of not providing a home for his family, we do know of his joy at being with Jesus and Mary. That's what really matters, right? This was Joseph's home the Holy Family's love for each other, not Nazareth or Egypt. As the saying goes, a house is made of brick and stone, but a home is made of love alone. Something to remember. So I invite you to ask Jesus to make his home in your heart. Let us pray. Pray for us, blessed Joseph, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your infinite wisdom and love, you chose Joseph to be the husband of Mary, the mother of your son. As we enjoy his protection on earth, may we have the help of his prayers in heaven. And we ask this 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you later. God bless.